kiddos. Now that we have learned how to find slope from a graph and find slope from a table, now we're going to get to the nitty gritty and find slope using the formula. Remember, any of the ways that I have taught you will work anytime that on, on any problem, but the slope formula is going to be the most useful for you because it is applicable no matter what how the problem is given to you. So I'll try to keep this short and sweet, but here we go. Given two points, I'd like a pen, hang on. Given any two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, so any two points, we're going to find the slope, which we're going to represent by the letter M, okay? The reason why it's an M is as big a mystery to me as it is to probably you, but here's the way I remember it. Mountains have slopes, and the word mountain starts with the letter M, so M is always slope. The formula to find slope, if you have are given two points, is to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and this should remind you a whole lot of what we did yesterday which was find the change in y or on Monday over the change in x so when you did a table you did delta y over delta x this is it's exactly the same thing now we have it in a formula the change in the y values over the change in the x values so let's practice a few we're going to determine the slope of the line that passes through each set of points so number one I'm given two points here, 2, 3, and 9, 7. So this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. And so to find my slope m, I'm going to use my formula, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I'm just going to plug in what I know. Well, y2 is 7, y1 is 3, x2 is 9, and x1 is 2. And so now I just subtract. 7 minus 3 is... 4, 9 minus 2 is 7, and so the slope of that line is 4 over 7. So for, to get from this point to this point, I would go up 4 and over 7. It means it's positive, so it's an increasing line. So the next one, I have two points, negative 5, 4, and negative 5, 1. So we're going to use the same formula. y2 is negative 1, and y1 is positive 4. So I have negative 1 minus 4 over x2 is negative 5 x1 is also negative 5. So I end up having a minus a negative, which if you will remember, whenever you do minus a negative, you do leave change change, it's the same thing as having negative 5 plus 5. These two negatives go together and it turns into a plus sign. So that's a quick shortcut for you. We'll help you when you're doing these. So now let's do the calculations. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And hopefully you remember division by 0 is impossible. So this one has undefined slope. Which hopefully you also remember means this is a vertical line. Because vertical lines have undefined slope. So now look at the next example. Instead of being given two points, I'm being given three. I have 10, 8, negative 6, 2, and negative 14, negative 7. When you run across a problem like this, it does not matter which two points you choose. Any two points will work, okay? You can pick two and ignore the third one. It, it makes no difference. But I have three points to choose from, and just to test this negative thing out again, I'm going to use, I'm going to ignore this point, and I'm gonna use these two, because I wanna practice with the negatives again so that you can see what I just did. So, Here's my first point, negative 6, 2, and my second point, negative 14, negative 7. So y2 is negative 7 minus y1, which is negative 2. So minus a negative is the same thing as plus 2. And then x1, x2 is negative 14 minus x1, which is negative 6. So it becomes plus 6. And so I have negative 7 plus 2, which is negative 5 and negative 14 plus 6, which is negative 8. The two negatives cancel each other out, and the slope of that line is 5 over 8. And so there's my answer. So that is the slope formula in action, how it works. Let's, let's look at a, another example. So I have a graph that shows how much water is in a reservoir at different times. So we're supposed to find the slope of the line and explain what that slope represents. Well, they gave us the points on the line. Now, you have a graph. We could count rise over run, but since we're practicing slope formula, we're going to use our slope formula. When you are looking at a graph and you want to use the formula, the point on the left is always the x1, y1, and the point on the right 
is the x2, y2. You should always read it left to right. So for my slope here, y2 is 2,000 and y1 is 3,000. x2 is 60. y2 is, sorry, x1 is 20. And so 2,000 minus 3,000 is going to be negative 1,000. And 60 minus 20 is 40. Well, this will simplify. I can cross off a zero, but I still have negative 100 over 4, which hopefully you know by dividing is the same thing as negative 25. 4 25s make 100. So my slope is negative 25 over 1. It's negative because my line is decreasing. Now, what does the slope represent? Well, here are my labels. Okay, it's the water in a thousand cubic feet over the amount of time. So what this means is, because it's negative, I'm decreasing. This means that the water level decreases by 25,000 feet cubed every day. That's the meaning of the slope. Sorry. And it's not day, it's hour. Because my label here says hours. So that's what it means. It's the water level per hour. And so my water level is decreasing 25,000 cubic feet every hour. And if that continues, you're probably not going to have any water in your reservoir soon. So a couple more examples. Because sometimes you were given two points and a slope, but you weren't given the entire point. You were given a part of a point and asked to find what's missing. And so we have to practice this solving for R. You're still going to use the slope formula, the slope formula that we learned, but this time they've told us the slope. So instead of writing m, m here is negative one-third. So I'm going to do negative one-third equals, and then I have my y2 minus y1, so I have 3 minus r, and my x2 minus x1 is 6 minus 9. So let's go ahead and simplify. 6 minus 9 is going to be negative 3 and so I have now simplified this looks like a proportion to me and so in order to solve this and get R I'm going to treat it like a proportion and I will cross multiply so we'll multiply here negative 1 times negative 3 is 1 is a 3 not 1 and then when I cross multiply here I got to do 3 times the 3 and 3 times the R so 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 times R is 3 R well now I have an equation I can solve for R and I start this equation by subtracting 9. So 3 minus 9 is negative 6 equals negative 3r. And I will divide both sides by negative 3. And so that I get that r equals 2. That means this part of the point right there is 2. And so that's what needs to go here to make the slope between these two points negative 1 third. So let's do it one more time just to make sure we get it. So my slope is negative 3 fourths. Y2 this time is R. Y1 is 4. X2 is 8. X1 is 3. So simplify. 8 minus 3 is 5. And so now I cross multiply. Negative 3 times 5 is going to be negative 15. And then 4 times all of this gives me 4R minus 16 because I had to multiply by 4 on both of those. So I'm going to solve by adding 16 to both sides first. Well, this gives me 1 equals 4R. Yes, because negative 15 plus 16 is 4R. And so then I will divide by 4. And so I get that R is 1 fourth. So this right here has to be 1 fourth in order for my slope to work out to 3 fourths. And I want to make sure that I did my math correctly here because that seems like a very ugly answer. So I'm going to pause for a second to double check. Well, my math checks out. It just seems like an odd answer. But anyway, R is 1 fourth. Now this question down here at the bottom, I want to talk about before I let you go. So the slope of a line passing through negative 5, 7 and x negative 6 is undefined. It says find the value of x. Well, undefined is not a number. It is not a number I can plug in, but hopefully you remember that undefined slope means I have a vertical line. Okay, because vertical lines have undefined slope. And somewhere in your notes, you have the word VUX. Vertical line, undefined slope, 
x equals. That's because the equation for any vertical line is x equals whatever x equals. If this is a vertical line, then x has to be the same everywhere. So x right here is negative 5. So guess what x right here gets to be? Negative 5. And that is true because this is a vertical line. That hoi vux comes in very handy because this problem is very simple. If you remember, undefined slope means a vertical line means x equals. Okay, that is slope formula. We will practice this when you come to class tomorrow. I'll see you then.